You got to play rough when you cross that line of fire. You got to have guts, stand for your rights. You got to keep a grip enough to hold on tight. You got to do the fighting with all of your might. You got to keep the target straight ahead on your side. Got to get tough, no joke. Got to get tough. G.I. Joe, America's top secret mobile strike force team. Yo, Joe. The mission? To defend freedom. Yo, Joe. The threat? Cobra. An evil organization bent on world conquest. Yo, Joe. The battle cry? Yo, Joe. Got to get tough. Yo, Joe. Got to get tough. Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. In the early 1990s, G.I. Joe, along with a lot of other properties, a lot of other IPs in the industry, went a little bit, well, shall we say, EXTREME! Yes, folks, the early 1990s were extreme. Extreme colours, extreme noises, extreme extremities. Um, everything was just extreme. There are a number of reasons for this. I think it was the fallout of the 80s, which were a little bit muted. Uh, there were a lot of things that went wrong with the late 1980s, and I think the beginning of a new decade, the last one before the millennium hit, was a time of hope. Uh, everything would get better and great before the last millennium. It's the last big blowout of the 1900s. Um, that kind of thing. And I think a lot of toy properties certainly thought, well, kids are a little more clued in. They expect a bit more. The 70s were pretty drab, so anything in the 1980s with a bit of colour was going to be great. Uh, so because the 80s were a little bit more colourful than the 70s, you had to go even better to make the 90s uh, even more colourful. Sadly, that ended in 1994, when Oasis released Definitely Maybe, one of the worst albums ever made. Not because it was musically bad, it was musically okay, it was run of the mill, but it turned people into douchebags who took themselves too seriously. Uh, I will include myself in that list. Uh, I became sullen and shoegazy and wasn't a very nice person to be around for a few years, mainly because I wanted to be Manchester, Marfoy, etc. A uh, great example of this, there's a Harry Enfield sketch with Kevin and Perry in there where Perry goes to Manchester. Perry's a Londoner uh, and uh, he goes back saying, oh mad for it, mad for it, I'm drinking Oasis and all this kind of stuff. People turn into utter twats for a little while because of Oasis, so I will forever hate them because of that. Uh, but yeah, in the early 90s, everything was a bit more hopeful, it was a bit better, it was a bit louder, it was a bit colourful and neon and G.I. Joe was definitely one of these things. If you haven't already please do check out this. This is the series of uh, Deke rather than Sunbow and it's great. This is series two. I do have both series. I've got all the G.I. Joe cartoons now which I'm quite happy about. Um, but yeah this is series two. Series two was even louder than series one. Uh, the animation is a bit ropey, it has to be said. Uh, but, you know, Deke were doing it for a lot cheaper than Sunbow did, so you get a lesser budget and it's not going to look as good. The stories are pretty much the same, but what's really good about it is it's sort of... Uh, this is the series where Eco Warriors came in. This is the series where you saw a lot of the vehicles that were from the late run of Real American Hero. So they're all neon coloured, they're all bright. The Cobra vehicles are quite frankly ridiculous, which they should always be. That's the main rule for me with G.I. Joe, is that G.I. Joe vehicles, I'm quite happy being sort of militaristic and, and you know, run of the mill. Awesome, but you know, what you would expect a military outfit to have. Cobra vehicles should always be a little bit off, a little bit ridiculous. Uh, and this, this is where I come to the part of the show where I show you one of the most ridiculous G.I. Joe uh, stroke Cobra vehicles that I have ever seen. And is of course the septic tank. Ladies and gentlemen, the septic tank. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Come on, let's face it. it everything about this thing is stupid. Um, the his tank, for example, was pretty stupid. We're talking about a thing that's essentially front heavy. Um, the, the tracks are on totally back to front, so it wouldn't really be able to make much of a, an impact anywhere. It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world. Um, and, and the gun placement is on the back there, which nine times out of ten, it means that the gunner can't actually see what they're firing at, even if there is a computer readout. Um, and yeah, it, the his tank is essentially ridiculous. This sort of ramps it up, because it's the 90s, it has to be more extreme. So, the his tank is not only extreme uh, and stupid, but it is bright orange with uh, hints of sickly green. And uh, 
doesn't even have a real sort of canopy that you can see out of. Again, I'm assuming um, this is because of a computer screen in there, but it never really gets explored in the show. I'm not sure whether the comics ever sort of did anything with the Eco Warriors line. I think by that point, um, the comic had finished. I think it finished about 91, something like that, 91, 93. I don't think Larry Hammer ever really touched upon it. So cartoons only. Um, the deep cartoon featured the, uh, the septic tank quite heavily. Um, what is it? Well, during the early 90s, environmentalism sort of came to the fore. It's sort of that work a day and every day now that we don't even really think of it as a thing. But in the early 90s, you were suddenly told, hang on a minute lads, if you continue the way you do, the environment is impacted, that hurts the earth, that sort of restricts our survival on this planet a little bit. And it was a new thing, and toy companies responded by basically making eco lines of everything, uh, using all the oil and plastic doing so, so completely missing the point, but sort of bringing environmentalism to the core. This is the era, lest we forget, of Captain Planet and the Planeteers, and G.I. Joe sort of responded in a similar way by um, making Eco Force, which was the G.I. Joe version of Captain Planet, I suppose, uh, where you had various characters from G.I. Joe all running around in bright neon colourful outfits and saving the planet. And Cobra obviously trying to pollute as much of the planet as possible. And the septic tank is basically one of those things that they are going to use to pollute the planet. So let's have a look at the thing. Well, like I say, it's a standard his tank body, but it is... Uh, cut moulded and coloured in bright orange plastic as opposed to the normal black. Um, by this point Cobra having given up any pretense of being anything other than a lunatic fringe uh, terrorist organisation. Um, two major differences you will see. You've got this canopy here which is, I always like to think uh, it's sort of like a breathing apparatus rather than a canopy to, to, to keep things out. It's sort of the septic tank is basically going to pollute everything that it goes near. Uh, not only with the exhaust, but with the gun, which we'll come to in a minute. Now, this is sort of like a massive breathing apparatus for the driver inside, who, when we pop the canopy open, because it does really easily, it clips down, like so. It doesn't really clip into place. But uh, when you pop it open, who should we see but Overkill? Well, we'll have a little look at Overkill. This is quite an old figure that I got from uh, Mr. Wheelbreaker 41 many, many moons ago now. Um, Overkill was brought in to basically lead the bats. And we'll have a look at him in, in more depth at some other point. But Overkill is a major character in the Deke series, especially season two. Um, and he's just a robot, so he can be bashed up and broken and destroyed as much as he wants to be. Um, always complains about it, never happy about it. Uh, but Cobra Commander basically just likes destroying the guy and doesn't really care. Uh, but he is the, the backed commander, whereas before they'd not really had a commander as such. Got a nice little feature um, as, as overkill. Uh, if I can get him open. There you go. Basically, his chest comes apart, like so. And he has a couple of little guns in there. And his chest uh, sadly does come off because it's an old figure. It was never a great design in the first place. But there you go. There, you get the idea. So the guns come out. And, and blast you there. Now, we only really showed that feature in one episode. Where was the Eliminator, I think he was called. I want to say the Eliminator. It's basically just upgraded. Uh, but he reverted back to type at the end of the episode. But there you go. That's Overkill. Major player in the series. Um, but other than that, there's no stickers inside to speak of. There's nothing really interesting going on inside. It's just a place to put your driver, really. Um, in the... Gunnery position, we have a, a second series bat. So this, these are the last ones before G.I. Joe, Real American Hero sort of became not a thing anymore. But these are very, very brightly coloured. Neon orange and green and, and black. Black featuring quite heavily because it makes the neon colours pop more, basically. Uh, but yeah, you see those all the time in series two. It's a great episode where they uh, invade El Dorado. And the, uh, the bats actually get possessed with the ghosts of the uh, Spanish conquistadors. Um, and so get, keep getting battered and broken and just keep putting themselves back together. So it's kind of Terminator-esque. But uh, I, I love this era of G.I. Joe. It's so bonkers. And these, these really show how bonkers it is. Because the colours on them are just great. They're amazing. Uh, it's got a nice little lenticular sticker on there as well. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, the meat and potatoes of this is obviously... The septic tank itself in the gunnery position obviously there's no way anyone's going to see 
anything in front of them and they didn't even include a little computer screen sticker sadly um, but basically what you do you fill up this with water and then use it syringe like to squirt the water out. Now it did come with an orange hose which I do have somewhere and I can't remember where it is but nine times out of ten you're just going to use it like that really um, the orange hose is, is included just to cover Hasbro's ass really um, so yeah you push like so like a syringe and that will squirt water at you um, also if you use hot water you will notice sort of dark green splodges on the on the uh, on the gunnery position there hot water will actually get rid of those and then when that dries obviously you'll you'll get those back uh, because it's being polluted obviously it's being polluted and nasty and terrible uh, great stickers on this I do love the biohazard sticker with the TM at this side there I, I, I do love that I've got little sort of sludgy stickers everywhere sort of showing the green sludge and slime that's covering the septic tank you also got uh, other little things. It's all covered with green sludge, and then you've got at the bottom there, you won't see it, but it says 360 uh, degree gun rotation. So get out the bloody way, basically. Um, it does go around really nicely as well, does this. Um, it sometimes sticks, but it's, it's quite new actually. Um, I say quite new, it's from the 90s. It was made in 1991, discontinued in 1992. But this was actually a present from my good mate Stu, uh, Dark Ages, who I believe is going to America soon. Uh, to live with his good lady, uh, another good mate of mine, Slick. So, very well done to you two. Uh, and I, obviously, I wish you every happiness. Uh, but uh, this was a present from him a few years back. He was very, very kind enough to send this to me in box as well. So, it, not as if it wasn't in the box. Um, because he knows I love my neon, I do. And I really do. I really love the early 90s uh, for that. And I think there should be a revival of this sort of toy, which is sort of extreme. I think everything takes itself a bit too seriously. Uh, again, I blame Oasis for this. Uh, so damn you, Liam Gallagher, to hell. Because you ruined this. You ruined this. We could have had more of this. What do we have now? Nothing. That's what we have. Nothing. We don't have any neon, and it sucks. Um, <laughs> if you want to get one of these, uh, they are sort of readily available on the internet with, you know, varying degrees of, of destruction. Because, you know, they were kids' toys at the end of the day, and kids can get destructive, especially with sort of G.I. Joe struck military toys but please try and get one because they're awesome um, I, I do love these things so so much I do want more as well it's a case of getting round and more space but I'll be moving house soon so I might have more space um, so I can get more of these I have a whole fleet of septic tanks but yeah definitely try and get one of these because they're great um, watch this and I'll let you have a look at it it's from Shout Factory and it's very, very cool. There's a great little featurette at the end of uh, the, the third disc, which is basically the Hasbro toy designers talking about early 90s GI, uh, early 90s GI Joe and defending what in effect is the indefensible. Um, saying, you know, all right, it was a bit goofy. Uh, we were going to the end of the, of the run there, but neon toys are cool and we want more of them. Uh, especially, you know, alley vipers, that kind of thing. Sludge vipers, top tail vipers. Oh, boy. I, mean, I know we have top tail vipers. Uh, but we need more of things like that, really. Um, very, 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 very cool. Um, one last thing today, um, before I leave you. It is my good friend and colleague's uh, wedding day today. Mr. Phil is getting married to his love, Mrs. Kim. Or she will be Mrs. Kim. Good luck to you both. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there, but I'm with you in spirit all the time. Have a great day. Uh, just bear in mind, everything will go wrong. Just roll with it. Just go with it. It'll be fine. I promise you. Uh, all that matters is that you two and the priest are going to be there at the same place at the same time. You can get married and then that's going to be cool for the rest of your lives. Um, so, yeah. In order. Good luck, Phil and Kim. Buy this. Watch this. It's good, I promise you. It's goofy, but it's good. Uh, and obviously, get a septic tank because these things are fucking awesome, they are. Um, they're really, really cool and really, really great and there should be more of them. In fact, everyone should have a his tank in their lives, no matter what kind it is. Um, this has been a pleasure, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mainly gentlemen, I'm guessing. If there are any ladies, please leave comments down at the bottom. I would like to know if ladies do watch this crap. Um, yeah, but I'll be back next week with, I think it's going to be a Masters of the Universe one. Because obviously... That's kind of the cycle I'm trying to go for here. So it should be Masters of the Universe, I would imagine. Uh, but until next week, do take care of yourselves and each other. Have fun with your little lives. 
uh, as I will have fun with my little life. And I shall see you next week. Bye-bye for now.